Welcome to Crappens. Don't wait a week for a new video. Join our Patreon at the Crappens On Demand level for instant recap access. Link in description. Enjoy the show. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast about all that crap on Bravo that we just love to talk about. I'm Ben Mandelker and joining me today is the one and only Mr. Ronnie Karam. Hi, Ronnie. How are you? Hi, everybody. Sit down, everybody. Sit down. Everyone sit down. Sit, sit down. down. Stop it. Come Stop on. Stop it. Um, wow, we're very excited today because we get to recap The Valley, which had quite a big third episode. This is episode three, I believe, right? Maybe it was four. I can't remember. But um, we're going to get into that. Before we do, just a reminder, we are doing some shows next month. Uh, in less than a month, or actually a month from today, ha, we are doing Netflix as a joke at the Kookaburra Lounge here in Hollywood. So go get your tickets for that. Um, and also uh, later in the month, we will be in London and Dublin and Birmingham. That's in Europe, guys. Um, go to watchercrappers.com to get your tickets for that. That's going to be all four shows are going to be just stupendous. And uh, don't forget, you can sign up at Patreon, patreon.com slash watchercrappers. You get access to Crappens on Demand so you can see our beautiful faces today. Uh, additionally, we have a bonus episode that you can also get via Patreon. We did a trailer trash breakdown, shot by shot, scene by scene, of the House of the Dragon trailer. Because House of the Dragon is back. And I'm pretty sure I called Aegon, I called Amon Aegon the entire time, but his name, but it was Amon. Sorry I mixed up Amon and Aegon. I can't believe I did that. It's hard to believe that one could possibly do that. But I did the entire time. So just be calling um, them all Joe. Hey, it's Joe. <laughs> Joe. It's Joe. Joe. Uh, Joe. Yeah, we um you know, every time we announce that we did that trailer trash, we need to apologize because we don't remember shit that happened. I mean, really, House of the Dragon was on 18 years ago in Watch yeah. Crappen's time. Okay, it was a long ass time ago. I don't remember half that shit. I mean, half the plot Ben was telling me, I was like, that happened? I forgot. This was... I forgot the dragon was originally promised to another girl and somebody stole the dragon. I mean, and some dude got his eye poked out by a, you know, a little kid. <laughs> and then, I mean, it's. There's a Here's, lot, so it's it's going to be one of the most frustrating things that you listen to. But we really just like talking about the ladies' hair and the sets, and you know who's like the mm -hmm. most fuckable on that show. So if you like that kind of discussion, go give it a listen. I mean, to be fair, I don't think it's really our fault that we had a hard time remembering what happened on that show, given that like seventy five percent of that show was just like pitch black. It was just like you're watching a black screen. And then all the characters have the same name. And it happened like five years ago. So like if we can't remember it very well, that's on HBO. It's not on us. Yeah. Uh, that's why I normally binge shows like that. I wait till a few seasons are out and then I, I watch a bunch of them at one time because I just forget. So in yeah. this case, we can't do that, obviously. So it's, it's a little different. But anyway, super fun. We're excited for that to come back. Also, Ben, we need to have a discussion, you and I. Oh, really? About the Valley. And maybe okay. I should do this while we're not <laughs> recording. Oh, I, I feel but like I'm, am, we... I, am I in trouble? I feel like I'm no. in trouble. <laughs> no, I, no, this is need to have I'm... a discussion, Ben. <laughs> I have ben, active come bitch. over here. Per... Ben, I don't have, there's there's no resting bitch <laughs> in me. I'm a complete here. active bitch at all times. You know? <laughs> Ronnie is holding like a little folder and is welcoming me into his office. Here, take a seat. We're just going to have a little private conversation, Ben. Well, I am twirling a, ben, a pen in my mouth between my teeth, which means <laughs> okay. you might be getting fired today, Ben, from the job <laughs> that you created for yourself. Um, the board has convened. Bueller, <laughs> Bueller, if you want Ben out of this job, be asleep right now. Bueller's sleeping, you're out. Okay. <laughs> a lot. We weren't going to cover Vanderpump Villa because it's not on... I knew channel. you were gonna fucking do this. I knew. I you know, were but it's not on the Bella. channel. And one person not tweeted. That, <laughs> not one person. A lot of people are like, "Oh my god, Vanderpump Villa! Oh my god!" Now here's the problem. There's already three episodes of it out, so I don't know how we're supposed to do that. But I feel I don't know. I feel like we're supposed to be doing it. Like I feel like it's our job. But then, what do we not cover on Bravo? Because there's so many things on the air. Like, what do we not cover? I don't feel like we can get rid of anything. So, what do we do? You know, a lot of Wait. people also similarly told me that the season two of uh, of um, Buying Beverly Hills is, like, amazing. and is, I can't is... take any more, Kyle. Okay, great. So I can't take any more Vanderpump shows. Okay. So there we go. Okay, it's then, then we solved it. Neither one of us is willing to bend. <laughs> I'm totally, I, would... I watch. I watched some of Vanderpump Villa today, actually. And I watched, I watched the preview and the opening credits, then we had to start recording. Uh, I'm not opposed to Vanderpump Villa. 
I just am like, we are doing eight shows a week. And I think that like at a certain point, I'm sorry. I am ab- every show that we don't do, people say, why aren't you doing it? At a certain point, okay. we just have to draw a line. I'm sorry. You know what? Let's just wait for another <laughs> pandemic. And then when a pandemic yeah. hits, we'll go back and we'll do Buying Beverly Hills and we'll do Vanderpump Villa. And you okay, know what? Well, that's if solved. Hulu, if, if Hulu wanted us to cover it, they would have sent us screeners too. Let's be honest. <laughs> I always pull somewhere. that card. I know. I always pull that card. It's like, if you want us to do it. <laughs> Okay, so that solved that. Okay, we're not covering it. Okay, let's get on to the valley. The valley doubting Doty. Doubting let's, Doty. let's talk about miserable people in a hot place. <laughs> yes, let's talk about how shocking it is that there are Republicans in the valley. I mean, literally, right. is anybody shocked? <laughs> um, and also, there's Republicans all over LA. They're just all closeted, by the way. Yeah. So <laughs> just, uh, this is true, uh, unless you're Tom Selleck but, um, or James Woods. But uh, you know what's – I thought – I mean, this was a great episode, I thought. But I also thought this was – they were really rude to our poor resident gay because all last episode, they're teasing Zach screaming in the kitchen, I did not say that. How could you even say that I said that? And so I was like teasing – building up this whole thing. We get to the end of the last episode and, you know, Brittany's like, oh, what about the shit that you're trying to bring up, Kristen? <laughs> and then we see five minutes later, Zach being like, shut up. I did not say that. And then it goes to be continued. So you're like, okay, so this week we're going to see how shit went like left at this party. But then we come back and we literally never see it. And they give us like a few tiny flashbacks. Why would they cut out this big situation? I don't know, but I wanted to see Zach run to the kitchen and then hide there because that was so funny to me. It was the best part that Zach ran to the kitchen to get away and then was just screaming from inside the kitchen at everybody else, <laughs> but still being too much of a wuss to go outside. Listen, Zach, you can't be surprised you're attacked when you have hair like one of the turtles in Mario Brothers. People just <laughs> want to jump on your uh, jump on your head and then toss you at an enemy. That's just you got to change the wig, dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna engender hostility <laughs> seriously next he's gonna show up with a mushroom haircut you know he's just gonna keep going going down the super mario path you know and then wonder why he's being victimized at every turn he really got off scot-free with this episode because he he stirred up a lot of shit Chris, i mean kristen got you know was accused of stirring up a lot of shit but it was zach who actually uh, stirred up the most shit and then he did not get he stayed out of it. I don't know how he did that. He just stayed in the corner making faces. He was making the the next the nosy next door neighbor face from Bewitched. That yeah, <laughs> <laughs> he kept making that face like the Koopa Troopa head. <laughs> Koopa Troopa. So, with, <laughs> what's the neighbor's name? Uh, I don't know. I want Mrs. Kravitz. Mrs. Yeah. Kravitz. <laughs> Mrs. Osmotic too. From Alf. Why not? Um, Who's that? Oh, from Alf. <laughs> she was the next door neighbor who was like is there an alien um so uh we start with Jax and Brittany and sherry at the farmer's market so i was like wait but what about the big fight what's happening here and they're like walking through and they're like buying stuff and everything and um the lemonades sherry can't believe that lemonades in la cost eight dollars and she's like i guess we're not in kentucky anymore <laughs> Oh, you want to cruise? Take a ride a little bit. <laughs> oh my God. Brittany's yucks were the worst today. And she's just getting worse by this. She literally is just walking around going, oh, hoo, oh, hoo, oh, hoo, yes. oh, hoo, oh, 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 I love fires. We know you love <laughs> fairs. Are you opening your own fair? Why is every week a circus theme on this show? The first week was the the party that they had that was a fair theme last week they went to the circus and this year they're at another fair oh well i guess this is the farmer's market but it has Close a fair enough. vibe you need to yeah. bring the farmer's market into it we get it you're southern okay <laughs> so now they're talking about dad's mom out and mom's nine out and britney's like hey that had boys not go with the dad's not out and he's like uh it was <laughs> pretty fucked up you know so i told you i invited alex you know and i talked to luke when i got there and he was like why would i give this guy a chance you know like why would i be one of friends be friends with x my girlfriend you know she's like yeah well chris and they're talking to jasmine and zach and i feel like i was in the middle trying to take off for you and blue he's like where 
Sorry, I shouldn't say I shouldn't say blow around you. I know better. It blew up. It's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and she was like, "Are you kidding me? I don't want my ex boyfriend around me or my fucking family. Like, what is so fucking difficult for him to understand? Like, I turned into a whole thing." <laughs> Flashback. And Brittany's like, Jakes, Christine, uh, Jakes is just trying to help you, Christine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Christine starts bringing up that Janet told Jasmine that Michelle was racist and a Republican and all this scrap. And I was like, wait, what, 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 what happened? <laughs> I know. Kristen said that so, Jana told Jasmine that Michelle was... I was like, I had to go back just a few times just to get the sentence straight in my head. So now we see a flashback and Kristen's going, What? What are they starting up? Huh? The truth that Jana told you that Michelle is like probably a Republican and like she's probably racist? Like that's the shit that Janet was saying. So, you know, the shoulder then, hitting her on the head. I mean, poor Kristen. <laughs> I'm surprised that she can even still hear after knocking herself right in the ear bone with that fucking shoulder all these years. Yeah. Here and she then, is. And then we see Jasmine getting up and being like, fuck you. And she's like, you know, Kristen, I swear to God, you are not, look at me. You are not going to say that Janet told me she's a racist. And then, and then Brittany's like, oh, I, I never saw that. I never <laughs> saw that. Oh my God. Is this a marble rolling pin? This is amazing. I never saw that, Michelle. <laughs> Jack's like, that's, that's not going to fly. Like, that's definitely not going to fly. By the way, I mean, what are the odds that Jax is a, cl a closet Republican? He definitely is, right? So, Oh, my God. A hundred percent. Right. You know, I don't, I don't think that he probably pays enough attention to politics <laughs> to really know. But I think he's one of those who's like, you know what? I'm not voting for the guy, but I love a real straight shooter like. <laughs> like Trump. Just saying. Just saying, guys. Just saying. I think he's. I think there's a part of it that he would vote for Trump just because he's he's angling for uh, Celebrity Apprentice to come back someday. <laughs> he's like, yeah. I know it's gonna come back. I want to be ready for it, man. <laughs> so Brittany's like, she's like, well, I wonder how Michelle's feeling today after she brought that up in her own home and said that about her. Somebody got called a Republican in their own home. You're from Kentucky. I mean. <laughs> Prince Brittany acting like she's never met a Republican before. Hilarious. <laughs> By the way, notice Sherry's staying real quiet. She's like, Mom, go, walk over there with your $8 leaves. We're about to talk about Republicans, okay? <laughs> now, I don't want you coming in here and being a Republican. All right. <laughs> so now we go to Jesse and Michelle's house. Michelle's like, I haven't slept. You have no idea what happened last night. Like, the first time in my life I've ever heard my name associated with these words. She said... Janet said Michelle is a racist and a Republican. <laughs> and Jesse's like, racist and Republican? <laughs> <laughs> Which yeah. should we tackle first? <laughs> and and meanwhile, by the to way, together? meanwhile, we're like three seconds in the episode. I was like, what is going on in this episode already? Like, we are just launched into this. This is so... the most LA fight ever, though. <laughs> oh my God, somebody called you a Republican. They're like, in your home? In your own home? <laughs> You're going to have to go away for a while. <laughs> um, so Michelle's like, yeah, I'm still shocked, to be honest with you. I'm like completely shocked. And Jesse's like, what, what the fuck is wrong with her calling you a Republican? Oh, my God. She's like, I, I just don't know what's even wrong with her. And then Isabella is like, um, calm down. Don't say fuck. And they're like, you don't say fuck. She's like, fuck you, mom. <laughs> and um, Jesse's like, sorry, I keep saying fuck around you, but it's in my vocabulary, all right? Now, if you'd fucking have paid attention to your fucking tricycle, maybe I wouldn't be this angry, <laughs> fucking brat. We got you some fucking training wheels. You didn't even fucking use them, you fucking little, stupid little three-year-old. So Michelle's like, um, we have a daughter. We don't say that word. You can't say that anymore because then she starts saying it. And she's like, back, 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 back. He's like, shh, no, we don't say that word. She goes, but you say it every day. And he's like, I know, I know. But when you do it, it's funny. But when I do it, it's wrong. So Michelle's just basically super upset because Janet wouldn't say that or else she wouldn't be her friend if she was really racist and Republican. And hello, I'm the one that's first generation Mexican and first generation Persian. Okay, well, you can still be racist. You I don't can still be racist as hell. <laughs> that's not a joke. I, I feel like that is such a thing of the past few years where people are like, guess what? Um, BLM, I'm a POC. It's like, uh, 
you're half Mexican. What are you fucking talking about? It's not the same thing. Like everybody is trying to just lump each other. It's like everybody's trying to get off in these social arguments by saying, I'm a POC. It's like, you're an American. 80% of us are a little bit something. It doesn't mean you can't be racist and ignorant. Okay, can we just stop yeah. this, everybody across the board? I don't know, it's I'm like, mad at everybody it's, now. It's like that book, Everybody Poops. Everyone can be a little racist. Everyone the song can do from it. Or the song from Avenue Q. Everyone's a little bit racist sometimes. Mm -hmm. But in this case, though, um, she is just like, I, I think what she's trying to say is, I understand what it's like to be judged by the color of your skin or from what group you're in. So I would never do that to someone else, which by the way, also is also not can true. still do that. <laughs> yeah, by the way. Um, so uh, Jesse's like, well, you should call Janet and be like, did you fucking say this? You fucking little fuck fuck. Sorry, Isabella. <laughs> so she does. She Michelle face on Janet and she's like, hi, do you have a minute? I have a super important question and I want you to be completely honest about it. Kristen said that you think that I'm like a racist and a Republican, so... <laughs> and she's like, what? Okay, that's like complete like bullshit to throw around an accusation like that. I need to have a conversation with her because that makes me like furious with her. Like that word and like your name has never come out of my mouth at the same time sentence okay never i had to put up a boundary with Kristen. okay so she goes into this story by the way her eyebrows are distracting i just had to say it. i normally want to leave people alone because i feel like she's pregnant like she doesn't she doesn't need me coming for her eyebrows but they're distracting me um okay. so anyway back to this she's very upset because she's been close to Kristen for years and she had to put up a boundary because her relationship with alex was so fucking crazy and it was making her crazy. And so the second she put up a boundary, which means I don't want to hear your shit for three hours a day. We've all had to yeah. put up that boundary. Kristen turned on her. I was like, oh, really? You're not my friend? Oh, really? You chose Alex? Oh, really? And just, you know, shouldered herself into the ear enough that she was psychotic about it. Right. Um, and so now she says, like, any time that Kristen has the opportunity to kind of throw me under the bus, she does. Which, by the way, if we go back to that party, wasn't Kristen didn't just like come out and be like, hey guys, I want to tell you all something. Wasn't it Brittany who was like, oh, you've been trying to stir up some trouble? And Brittany kind of actually pushed that out into the fore, right? Yeah, but about Kristen it. was the one telling them so that they would bring it out on camera, right? <laughs> I mean, who knows? So, uh, ja I just want to say, like, I just want to make sure Brittany gets hit with this stick a little bit, too. You know? That's all. I'm not trying to unstick Kristen, but let's get a little bit on Brittany, too. So, uh, Janet is like, this is like, this is like a whole new low, even for Kristen. And Michelle goes, and it's interesting for her to say that and you when you're like the only person there that night like you're the only one who's not there that night and she said that about you right yeah oh my gosh okay so michelle's like yeah i don't even know what happened um and then the boys night went out alex was there so you know she's triggered and then um, Janet's like, well, that's very typical for Kristen. And what I think is that she doesn't want Alex's side of their breakup shared. So now she's saying, because Kristen's opinion on Alex changed pretty quickly because she met Luke and suddenly made herself the victim in this relationship when Janet heard all about this relationship and Kristen was crazy in this relationship, but then once she got dumped and couldn't freeload off the guy anymore, then it changed to he's a narcissist. And she started using all the the code word, you know, the, uh, what do right. you call them? Like the social- The buzzwords, pop psychology. Buzzwords, yeah, pop psychology buzzword, you know? Well, she, yeah, she was like, uh, like as soon as she got with Luke, all of a sudden Alex became like a narcissist and he was awful, da 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 da. Which by the way, I do think like if you are with someone who's shitty and then you are with someone who's actually much better, you are, you do sometimes get hindsight. Like, wait a second, I have just been with a piece of shit all this time. So like, I'm, I'm okay with Kristen having a little bit of a pivot there. But that being said, we do know that she's probably the one I'm like, I, the listen, I'm not, I like shit. Kristen. I'm glad to see her back on TV, you know, in a way, even though that's probably problematic to say in itself. But listen, I'm enjoying Kristen. I'm giving her no leeway here because it's fucking Kristen. And I'm not going to forget 
that Kristen is Kristen, okay? Yeah. And this guy, Alex, I think everyone's mean to him because he's not like the hottest guy. He's like this big, tall, oafy guy who probably didn't bathe before he came to the circus night or whatever. And, you know, like just looks sloppy playing skee ball. No one likes a sloppy skee baller. Mm -hmm. And I think that everyone's being mean to him because he's not hot. And, you know, maybe we don't know what Alex has going on i mean according to alex Kristen got rid of her house because she was broke as hell and then just moved in and freeloaded off of him and stuff so maybe that ended and Kristen got mad i don't know i tend to be on Kristen's side more because i know her through the sh you know know her from the show or whatever but um it's Kristen, so i'm not gonna right. put all my bets down on the table yet so janet says that like i think like as soon as Kristen heard that the guys were with alex and without her she pulled something insane out of her ass like she says, like, I feel like you and I are both collateral damage in that. And it's not cool. I, but Kristen wasn't like, oh, you decided, like, Jazz decided to stir up shit by inviting my ex to, like, to basically to confront Luke with my ex at, 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 at Guy's Night. Kristen didn't then say, well, guess what? Let me tell you this, Michelle. Again, it was Brittany who said, hey, Kristen, you've been stirring up a lot of shit. Because Kristen was like, Brittany, that is so fucked up of Jax. I can't believe Jax is doing that. You're and right, Brittany yeah. was the one who was like, oh, well, you know, I'll talk about fucked up. Look at what you did. And so mm -hmm. she's the one who kind of like brought this to the fore when it wasn't even on the table right, as part yeah. of this fight. And you know what makes Brittany even worse in this situation? She was, she was throwing Kristen under the bus when it was really her friend, Zach, who started this shit. That's and true. She was trying to protect Zach by throwing Kristen under the bus. That's what I mean, I'm Brittany, saying. Really, here. she's like a multifaceted monster. Yeah, I'm not saying that Kristen is any angel by any means, but I I feel like like they really are um like this is Brittany. This is a Brittany and Zach issue. But can I also say while we're calling everybody trash five minutes into this, it's also Janet. And I don't believe for one second that Janet didn't say this. I 100% believe that Janet did yeah. say this. And guess what? I also believe that she's correct and that Michelle is a fucking Trumper and did say things that made her think that. I think that they're all lying and they're, they're having like a typical L.A. fight, which is like you are not allowed to talk about how you really feel or <laughs> <laughs> how I really feel, I guess. You know, like how your friends, like how dare you say how I really felt to a bunch of people that could cancel me, you know? Well, that's, that's what they're yeah. all fighting about. But I believe all of them. I believe Janet said it. I believe that she thinks it. And I think that whatever Michelle said to make her think it, Michelle said too. Yeah, because Janet basically tries to soften it later on, as we'll get into, by saying, no, 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 no. I never said that she was a Republican and racist. It's just that she seemed to be in favor of Florida's don't say gay laws. Yeah, she just hates <laughs> and gay and I trans just, people. That's I think she just deal. got like swept up in a logarithm. I was like, well, if you think she just got swept up in a logarithm and it was just that, then why are you going and telling people like, oh my God, she doesn't like that. She's like the all algorithm. for like Ron DeSantis and stuff. So like, yeah. I don't know. Something's going, something's going and on. And I love that in group. a don't say gay fight, they're blaming the gay. <laughs> the whole well, point the... is you don't believe in saying the gay. So leave the gay out of it. How are you not going to be, how are you, how are you going to be in favor of don't say gay laws, but then you're going to pin everything on the gay? This is so well, hypocritical, this whole fight. But also like Bravo literally does don't say gay because uh, Zach is such a big part of this. And they, again, they cut out the entire fight from the show. They cut out Zach's big moment. And they really don't center him in this at all. When actually the things that Michelle said, potential like the, what she allegedly said, really that's that should be something that is like very offensive to, to Zach. It should be very offensive to fucking everyone with well, any I know, but I'm in the context of and this... nobody says anything about it to her. She's the big victim. That that's what makes me crazy. Okay, we're jumping way, way ahead. So let's come back to this part. And by the way, I know I was the one who did it, but let's come back to when I say let's, I mean me. Uh let's come back to what's going on right now, which is Janet refusing to take any responsibility. So now Janet, when she gets confronted, is like, Well, Kristen's insane and here's why she's insane because of her boyfriend she's trying to she's trying to put forth lies about her boyfriend and wants us all to swallow these lies about her boyfriend right but also don't forget i mean I, i'm not trying to defend everyone here it's just that this is another lazy lazy susan of awfulness on this show but janet is also receiving this information like kristen showed up at this at this night and just decided i'm gonna like just talk shit about janet and that wasn't what happened. Oh, I mean, and by the way, thanks a lot, Bravo, because you didn't show it to us. So we have no idea really the context of how it truly came out. But um, well, so now Janet. That's why they're going to save it up for later. They're going to like slow, slow drip it. Ugh, 
it's just ridiculous. Did their cameras die or something like that? I don't know. No. They're, it's all there. They're going to slow drip it to us over the season. It's like the one, some good shit. Like, listen, I'm not asking for more supersized episodes, but here's the one time where they could have used a supersized episode. And they're like, hmm, no, we're not going to do it. It's like, yeah. really? And then, you know, in like two weeks, we'll get a supersized episode so we can watch, you know, 10 minutes of Britney walking around Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> There's a bobbin. I wish I knew about this place before I had my wedding. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, Michelle's like, yeah, I've known Kristen for a couple of years and she had problems and she broke up with her ex-boyfriend and then I had problems with Jesse and so we would talk about our problems together and then that's how we bonded. But this is how she repays me. It's like, well, listen, what does she owe you for? She had to listen to your stories about fucking Jesse. Okay, I, know. I would say you're pretty even. Okay, Jesse doesn't seem like such a prince over Alex. Yeah, exactly. So Jesse, so she gets off the phone and Jesse's like, and by the way, what does being a Republican have to do with it? She goes, yeah, like I'm not a Republican, which by the way, even if I am, who gives a fuck? <laughs> and then, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, so anyway, we then go to Kristen's apartment and Kristen and Luke are packing up her apartment because they are moving down the hall from Katie. Cause as discussed on Vanderpump rules recap, she's in the same building as Katie. And someone actually said that this Kristen talked about it on a podcast. So it has been verified now. Um, so Kristen's like, oh, God, I'm so ready to have a new space. And he's like, yeah, let's fill a couple more boxes and get over there. Can't wait to break in the new apartment too, huh? God, Luke, I swear to God, I've literally got dish towels that are more interesting, but mostly because I had to buy those dish towels with funny Southern sayings on them. Like the only normal people you know are the ones you don't know too well. <laughs> hey, I, I'm going to stop caring what people think. I hope that's okay with you. I'm like, yes, I love cleaning the kitchen now. I love a sassy kitchen clean. Okay, here's what I wanted to say. Um, I finally figured out who Luke is. Who? He is Clay Aiken on testosterone therapy. With He is a dog. With maybe he's a, a... He's Clay Aiken with like facial hair implanted on his face. <laughs> yeah, wow. and no one can convince me otherwise. This is Clay Aiken in disguise, barely disguised. Do you feel like there's like a little Ross Perot in there too? Like young in Ross the future Perot. for sure. He's definitely going down that path. <laughs> and you know what? He's there's no U-turns Perot's on that road. <laughs> that is a road with no U-turns. Once Maybe you Gary down that road. <laughs> I love that you're only going to go with politicians now. I'm going to go with go uh, politicians who have Aiken. long shot campaigns. I'm like Ronnie Clay Aiken. Actually, well, Clay Aiken is a politician. He did run for office. That's right. Oh, my gosh. So if you took Clay Aiken, Ross Perot, Gary Kucinich, and um, I don't know. Is there is there any other like really good like sh like strange also rant Jill Stein, <laughs> Carly Fiorina? Okay, so <laughs> Meg Whitman. While we're talking Meg about Whitman. people who Meg. look like people, I would like to put this uh, image up on screen of Gladys Kravitz from the film <laughs> Bewitched, so we can all talk about how much this looks like Zach giving everybody dirty looks. <laughs> it does look like Zach. It also looks like me watching the show. <laughs> 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 all right okay so anyway luke and chris gays we just have the same looks you know <laughs> so um chris uh luke's like can't wait to break in the new apartment and she's like you mean have sex in a bed <laughs> he's like yeah that's what i meant <laughs> By that so they bring uh, they're talking on the floor and she she shows us her new fancy apartment and she's like and there's room to play in here because like we even have sex toys we've got like five boxes of sex toys so like <laughs> and she's like um don't you think these knobs will be cute i love that she's like really concerned about knobs he's like yeah sure honey whatever you want she's like, you know what would make me happy is jack stopped pulling fucking jack shit last night like we literally just had this talk where i said i don't care if you're friends with my ex-boyfriend just please don't bring him around me and don't bring him around luke or like my family or my new knobs and then we see a flashback of uh that conversation at the smokehouse and luke is like yeah, the only saving grace of the night was that he pulled me aside first. And like, if I, it, it would have been a total blindside and that would have been totally shitty, man. 
man, don't even say blind because that's the best thing anybody could have been around you that night with that shirt on. Okay, I'm never going to forget that shirt that he wore ever. I'm never going to forget it and I'm never going to forgive it. So Kristen's like, I was so fucking upset when Brittany told me I was like backed into a corner. And then guess what? I fucking reacted. And that's just what I did for Jax to do that. I mean, it's just fake. And Jax promised me he wasn't going to pull this shit. So if he's going to pull shit like that, then I'm going to start calling people out on their bullshit. Okay, well, how does that make any sense? <laughs> call Jax out on his bullshit. How does Jax yeah. not have any bullshit for you to call him out on? Yeah, exactly. And so Kristen says, like, you know what I brought up? What Zach told us. So we see a flashback of Kristen saying, like, well, guess what? I found out that Janice said that Michelle's a racist and a Republican. And she's like, the truth. <laughs> <laughs> and Jasmine's like, are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> Would I be sitting right here if Janet told me that? That's Zach. That's Zach. So Jasmine gets pissed. Okay, so then I realized Jasmine... I know who Jasmine is. I recapped her season of The Bachelor over on Rose Prick. She was on Nick Vile's season of The Bachelor. Uh -huh. Isn't that crazy? I and knew it. I knew character. I recognized her. No, you know why? You know how I always tell that story about the time that Lala was on the pool at my roof in my old building? Jasmine was with her. It all comes together. I knew it. I knew it. It was really? her. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. So it's you. Jasmine was the one. Jasmine was there. And you know what? For all I know, maybe I mean I don't think Zach was there. I know that it was a gay. I think it was um, other Logan though. But I, that was when Lala was talking about Faith and how Faith was like stealing shit and like how um, she said, "Let the peasants be peasants." That's that was Lala talking about Faith. I'm not gonna hang out with Faith anymore. Let the peasants be peasants. I just will always remember her saying that at the pool. It was Jasmine who she said it to. You gotta love when someone's calling someone peasant at the apartment pool. I, mean, I know that you hilarious. don't even live in. <laughs> it's my peasant pool. <laughs> I love calling people peasants at this non-privately owned pool. <laughs> so, um, Kristen. Okay, so we see the flashback, and Jasmine's now pissed at Kristen. And Kristen's like, uh, yeah, okay, well, here's what happened. Before production started, there was a lot of shit talking going on like within our group, all right? And then everyone's going to like talk about it behind closed doors. But then when filming starts, nobody wants to talk about it. So like, I mean, sorry, so, but the cameras were up and, you know, we're going to just pretend it didn't happen. Well, I'm not going to pretend. And then she does her little shimmy thing where she's like shrugging and shimmying at the same time. <laughs> Justice. So she's like, she's like, Janet was like trying to start a bunch of shit by insinuating that Michelle could be homophobic or racist. And then last night, Zach fully denied it. And I just had enough. I feel like I upset Michelle by saying that. Like, oh, really? You feel like you upset Crazy. Michelle by saying that people in the groups think that she's like a racist and a Republican? <laughs> So she says that Zach's pissed off at her, but he knows better when it's a Janet thing because she had to come for Janet. And deep down, Zach told her because he really wanted her to light the fire and she knows it. And I just think so it's so funny because Kristen's the most experienced in reality TV and these people really don't. I saw a tweet that said something like, Kristen is well trained and these people stand no chance against her. And it is just so true. I mean, Kristen and Jax are just going to run ramshot over these people. And I love to watch it. Well, it's also, I love my favorite thing is when reality stars do this. And Whitney on Salt Lake City is the biggest offender. Oh, yeah. Well, Zach just wanted me to light the fire. It's like, well, and then you did. <laughs> he, she manipulated me. She wanted me to say that. It's like, and you did. And you so did. So don't it. act like you it's like it's like, oh, I knew all along. They just wanted me to, to you know, throw a table or something like that, knock a table over, and then you knock a table over. So why are you mad at them? You're the one who actually did it. Yeah. Well, you know what I would say, you know, in a Weight Watchers after a bad week, those M and M's were flirting with me. Okay. And you know what Janelle would say? Excuses don't burn calories. <laughs> and I hope they were peanut M and M's. At least they've got protein. God, I was eating like some M&Ms. I was like eating some this there. week, and I was like, I feel like I hear Ronnie's. I feel like I hear Janelle from Ronnie's Weight Watcher <laughs> trauma in my ear. <laughs> Apparently, it wasn't trauma. What a, what a great time. Drama, so, maybe. Yeah, I loved it. So, um, let's see. Uh, so Kristen's like, well, I didn't mean to. Oh, Luke's saying, well, the best thing to do, Kristen, is when somebody tells you something, maybe don't tell everybody. Yeah, thanks, Luke. 
But I love that here's Luke's here to Luke explain simple things to us all. So I don't like Luke, by the way. Can you tell? I don't know why. He's done nothing to me. So Kristen's like, him. oh, I didn't mean to weaponize it, but I did. Oh. <laughs> so Kakari. Uh, <laughs> Kakari. So now we go over to Danny and Nia's condo. And uh, Nia is like instructing Danny how to feed her pre-pumped milk into the child because uh, she's going to go overnight somewhere because she's going to be it's like she's going on like a cruise or something. So she's like, so are you ready for me to leave? And she's like, uh, yeah, I mean, how much milk do you have <laughs> from the actual teat? Um, so I, I, I want her to do it like every night, like every other bottle formula and like breast milk. Da Daniel, are you listening to me? You should do it the frost two to four bags at a time. And he's like, oh, man, it's like typical, like, oh, man, I'm a man. I don't understand how to feed a baby right now. Why do humans get to brag that we're like the most advanced species on Earth when we're such fucking pussies when we're born? I mean, seriously, you have to chain a lady up to a pumping machine for months at a time. She can't even go out of town because we can't do shit on our own. Have you ever seen a baby elephant get born? Here's what the mom does. It walks past the camera, because that's the only time I've seen this on TikTok. <laughs> the lady walks past the camera, literally just stops like she's about to burp, splurts out a baby. And guess what the baby does? It gets up and starts fucking walking. I think human beings need to stop bragging because we're ridiculous. Okay. And I, yes, I'm talking to you, you, I'm talking to all of you three under two <laughs> wussies. <laughs> but the worst is when that baby elephant gets stuck under a couch and then Sherry just comes running out of nowhere. It's like, where is he? <laughs> Starts putting white lipstick all over the, the elephant's trunk. <laughs> so Nia's we talking find out about Nia. Yeah, it's she's going to. Yeah, she's going to be working. Cosmos USA, I'm very blessed to be able to continue to do appearances. Wow. Have fun yeah. with that. So um, yeah. he's got to take care of the kids. So I hope we get like a wacky Mr. Mom episode. Danny scares me. He seems like Danny and Nia seem like they have the most loving relationship. They're really sweet to each other. They're always like going for little kisses. And it doesn't feel like it's performative. But then sometimes when you look at Danny, it's like, I feel like his eyes are just black circles. Like, I'm like, I don't even, I feel like I don't even see any of like the white part. It's just like, I feel like his eyes are like pools of evil sometimes. And I'm like, I don't know if I trust this man. Everything He's he exhausted. does seems nice, but every, but he, there's something scary about his eyes, right? Well, here's what it is. And I don't want to offend anybody. So just, if you're easily offended, just don't listen to this next part. So I think it's because he's short and, you know, when you're really short, everybody's taller than you. And so you're constantly in the shadows. And so I think his pupils get really big because he <laughs> thinks it's darker than, than taller people. <laughs> you know what? That's a very sound theory. Thank you for reminding me of short people shadow theory. Uh, that, um, yeah. I, I love, by the way, every week for some reason, this is like the nicest <laughs> couple. They're the, they're the, like the most pleasant people and they're the most mature. And I've already called her a monster. And now I say that he has evil lurking behind his eyes. But let me tell you something. I got to back myself on this. I got Back gotta, yourself. Back you yourself know? up. So um, the other thing is that he plays a zombie. The, well, even the, just the voice of a zombie. So now I can see zombie in him. Mm. You know what I mean? You know how yeah. when you see a zombie, you see the character they were before the zombie a little bit? Because they're the same person. You know, they're just zombified. That's what mm. he is to me. So he is kind of scary. Um, so now we go over to Jax. Jax yeah. is... Um, Going to Jax's, which uh, looks maybe about the size of a shoebox. I'm not Did, really, who it's, was it's a taco truck. What are they opening? <laughs> who was telling me? Was I with you? Who was I talking to? Who said that Jax's is kind of like a ghost kitchen? Or it's like it's another restaurant and there's like a little back area that they opened up that they just call Jax's, but it's part of like a larger restaurant. Were we talking um, to someone yes. about that? Uh, someone told us that on another podcast. We were talking to a podcaster, I think, that went. Because we I was were. with you. So whoever yeah. told us. It Who was... were we? Which podcast were we just on? <laughs> um, we just did the big flop. And we just talked to somebody talk else, too. There. But I don't remember. But yeah, someone well, was telling us it's, it's a ghost kitchen. There's a place next door. Um, hmm. No, it was on Crappy Hour, maybe. Anyway, I don't know. Maybe ghost that's kitchen. what it was. Yeah, by the way, I you also heard a rumor. Hour. I'm sorry, what'd you say? You should all listen to Crappy Hours. So you get the information. 
Not that we listen to it because we have no idea what we're fucking talking about. I have no idea. I don't know what we've been talking about for the past 20 minutes, to be honest. I'm like, also, <laughs> neither does anybody. I heard a rumor that something about her, the sandwich shop was ghost, it was using ghost kitchens around the country to be sold on Uber. Like sandwiches yeah, were too. selling uh, something about her sandwiches on Uber Eats. Is that true? Have you heard that? Uh, no, I just saw that like on an Instagram comment. Uh, hmm. Well, you know but... who heard it? <laughs> hey, that is not true, Michelle. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I want to tell you a secret. It just says between the two of us, something about her selling sandwiches on Uber Eats across the nation. But not to gay people or races. <laughs> Michelle just says she general. doesn't want those sandwiches because they're made by people who support gay rights. <laughs> They're they're selling sound sound. There's something about Republicans. <laughs> <laughs> Chef Punny made a special sandwich. It's all it's, it looks like a MAGA cap, but instead it's just a tomato caprese. <laughs> uh, okay, so then we go over to Jax's, and he's got a little golf cart that he pulls up to, and um, he's hitting garbage cans because he's Jax, you know. <laughs> So he's like, hey, guys, what do you think of the flower wall? What do you think of the flower wall? Brutal, brutal, honest opinion. <laughs> I love a brutal, honest opinion about a flower wall. <laughs> yeah. They're like, looks great. Looks great, Jax. Wow, love it. Love it. He's like, yeah, I need to pop a little bit more. You know, it looks like I thought it was going to be like more three dimensional, but like, that's fine. Like, we're okay. What's going on? Where, where are we at? <laughs> so then Roger is like, okay, we got some interviews lined up. So we need to have some really, really good workers for this hole in the wall bar. So Jack's like, I've been a bartender like the majority of my life. And, you know, I had some really crazy, crazy years at Sir, And I'm really very fortunate to where I don't have to put up a bunch of money because I've got three partners that are footing the bill. And uh, I personally haven't invested anything. I'm like, then it's not your, it's not your bar, Jax. <laughs> it's not your bar. And thank you for admitting that. You dumbass. <laughs> What what ownership stake do you have in this bar then? <laughs> yeah. So probably like this 2% or something. He's probably got like a Tom and Tom kind of a deal. So uh, then we see a clip of Jax being a totally professional bartender where some girl's like, can I have a mojito? And he's like, I'm not muddling today. <laughs> and then he drops an entire bottle of Don Julio. <laughs> oops. So he's like, actually, to be honest, Bars destroy marriages, you know? Not like, look at the Toms. No, bars don't destroy marriages. Bad men destroy the yeah. the men you're the marriages you're talking about on this show are terrible fucking men. Okay, the same thing that's <laughs> going to destroy your marriage. Yeah, because yeah, I I mean I saw all the problems that they went through, and I just I want to make sure that, that I didn't run into any of those problems because like I so I have to involve my wife because I think I should be in charge of hiring the staff. And Brittany, like you could take the plant wall. I'm just imagining all those plants being like little shop of horrors. And they're all going, oh, yikes. Find my yikes. Find my yikes. Find my yikes. So um, I love that he's saying he's going to give Brittany something to do at this part. Please don't. <laughs> and I, I love just, how I mean how condescending he's like I want to give her a sense of ownership so she can like what are the plants on the wall <laughs> and they're not even real plants it's a painting of a flower on the wall of flowers by the way <laughs> so then um, they interview she's, she's still gonna be up there with a watering can pouring water on the painting <laughs> hot's gonna grow J.I.X. you gotta give these flowers love <laughs> So then we see them interviewing people, and of course, the way that Jax is looking these girls up and down with the hungry yeah. eyes of a balding wolf is just uh, <laughs> a balding who wolf. Who would marry Jax? I mean, Brittany. Like, on I hate saying people deserve what they get, but honestly, it's like you order uh, you ordered the sandwich <laughs> that came to you. You know what I mean? He's disgusting. This guy. He's fucking disgusting. Is my point. I will never get. About I have to say, I love this show that he created. Love it. God, I still hate him so much. I hate him. But I love. I love that he's back on TV. But I hate his gut so much. I guess that's the point, right? Yeah. I mean, he did the smartest thing Jax ever did was make sure that Jesse was on this show, so that way Jax looks like semi decent in comparison. Hmm. So we see this uh, a lady come in to interview, and they only show like very fleetingly, but she has no bra on. Like we see like a little nip 
coming through. So of course we know she's going to get the job. Jax is like, his boner is like lifting up his table. Like his table's up at his nose because his boner is lifting up so high. And uh, yeah, she, uh, he's like, this gal decided not to wear a bra. So did we end up hiring her? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. So they hire, they hire her. Um, so then uh, she does like a test drink and it's a lemon drop. So, you know, she's, she's serious. It's basically like a mixology place. <laughs> It's basically, it's basically the same as Tom Tom. Yeah. So then uh, Brittany meets up with Kristen to make up for, okay, so Brittany and Kristen meet up and they have to talk about this and they meet up at a horchateria, which is so funny yes. because when you're not in the valley, they go to juice places where they have to drink like grasshopper jizz and then you go over to the valley and that's where you get the real fucking sweet, delicious 900 calorie <laughs> drinks. I'm moving to the valley. That's it. I'd love it there. Yeah. This show is how do, how many people do you think are going to move to the valley after watching this show? Um, I think Besides it's just going to uh, I, I think that like uh, it, it'll just be just like a surge a search, a wave of people are going to move there. All the hipsters are just going to just say, we are coming in to Reseda. Mm -hmm. We are taking over Chatsworth. And Reseda, we will... that's where Bueller's from. Really? That's my hometown, Reseda. Yep. Wasn't that in like Free Fallen? Isn't that lyric in Free Fallen about Reseda? Reseda? I don't know. Um, so... Um... It's where my hair has been living for years. <laughs> okay, so Sita. Kristen is like, oh my god, this like smells like a this like churro smells like a Christmas candle that you would have. Because of course, Brittany, see, and I don't like Brittany, but this is how she orders, which makes me kind of like her. Can we have some mini churros? <laughs> I'm like, you're having horchata and churros. That's my kind of girl. <laughs> Yeah, so Kristen's like, yeah, this smells like a Christmas candle. It's like, cut to Kristen actually eating a Christmas candle. It's like, you're doing it, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was for the center base. Uh, so uh, Brittany's like, so how are you feeling? Because she still has that frown. That fr Brittany with her frown, her surgically induced frown is making me cackle every single scene. Because now she has to like overcompensate for the frown by being extra cheery to, to Prove to people that she's not frowning. She's like, so how are you feeling? She's just like leaning on a churro to make it look like she's smiling. <laughs> she's like, oh, the way you feel. <laughs> I'm so overwhelmed. Oh, because that girl's not kind of took a turn, by a turn, obviously. I mean, Jan is really, really, really pissed off right now. Anti. <laughs> She was like, at who? She was at you, because, you know, everybody called her and told her that you basically said that Michelle was a racist. And she's like, I didn't say that. Or Republican or whatever. Me, out of all people, really? Seriously? Seriously? You think this is a topic that I want to talk about ever? And she goes, well, that was my point. I was like, why is Kristen even bringing this up? I mean, that's like her going after people's faith. <laughs> you know, it really sucks to have a word that's so hurtful, even be affiliated with your name. But I repeated what was told to me. So something that Janet said. So why the fuck is everybody mad at me? So she's like, listen, I was just backed into a corner. So that's why I spat it out. <laughs> right, she's, she's like, like is, well, she's like, that word I'm is glad such you're... a hurtful word. That is such a terrible word to be associated with you. But you backed me in a corner. So, of course, I lobbed it at you. Yeah. <laughs> so I had to do it. <laughs> so uh Brittany's like, well, I'm glad you're owning up to that. Yeah, yeah. And um, so she's like, you know, I don't think that Kristen does anything on purpose to hurt people. She just does sometimes. She's like Jake's in that way. Yeah. I don't know if Janet is actually the one who's saying these things or not, but like so it, it like something will say it and Kristen exaggerated like Jax would. Jax does this all the time. You know, boys will be boys. <laughs> And so Kristen's like, this Zach stuff is what's really fucking me up. And she goes, well, you got to talk to him because he's like, he's getting like dumpster fire real fast. He tried to take off his hair and knock <laughs> us all down with it right in a row. <laughs> he's literally wearing a mini dumpster on his head now. So, um, and then he put his hair on top of that. So Kristen's like, Kristen calls Zach because they're gonna ha hash it all out. And so she's like, hey, I'm with Brett, you're on speaker. He's like, hey, what's up? Hi, honey. Okay, I'm wildly confused why you were denying the stuff that you told me, Kaka. He's like, what part are we referring to? She's like, yeah, well, Janet told Jasmine that Lily Lolly 
that Michelle Lolly, <laughs> sorry, Janet Lily told Lolly. Jasmine that Michelle Lolly, I like that. Michelle Lolly, they say it 10 more times now. Michelle Lolly <laughs> being a Republican and that she should be careful. And Zach's like, well, the Republican thing was sad, but that doesn't mean racism, Kristen. And I never said that. You cannot do that, Kristen. And she goes, well, why would I use the fucking R word unless that's what you said to me? So don't throw me under the bus. And goes, oh my God, Kristen, you're the bus driver. <laughs> You're the one driving over all the dead bodies. Well, how did they die in the first place, by the way, Zach? <laughs> yeah. You're twisting everything. Like, I'm not saying that there wasn't something that happened, but like what you did was like you took something that was like very simple that I was like talking about behind the scenes because I was like, oh, that's weird. You don't just like blurt out that stuff and accuse somebody of saying that someone's racist like that. I'm like, well, so you did say the racist thing. <laughs> Exactly. And he said it. Well, we'll learn why he said it. But um, so then Kristen, well, he's saying, oh, you know what? Kristen cannot keep a secret to save her life. <gasps> like, even when I'm telling her, do not tell this person. I'm telling you this because you're my friend and I want you to know, but I need you to keep it to you. She never once has been able to keep a secret. Not even one single time. Then why are you telling her? I, why are you're you only telling... lending credence to her theory that you told her because you wanted her to tell everybody. My favorite thing is when people who've been told a secret who then go and tell someone else a secret and then that person tells the secret gets mad that someone told their secret. The like, Zach, you one. know that it was that that Janet told Brittany in this story and Brittany told you. You were the one who couldn't keep a secret and told Kristen, okay? <laughs> yeah, and Brittany's like, well, but the point is you brought it up at the party. And Kristen's like, yeah, well, rather than it being the point that you guys were all talking a bunch of shit and bringing it to my front door, and I was the only one to say it out loud. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Did I say, by the way, that, that Jana told Brittany the secret? I meant Jana told, what's her face? The girl from The Bachelor. Janet told Jasmine, right. Jasmine. I, Jasmine, I said Brittany, I meant Jasmine. I don't want people to be confused. Jasmine, Jasmine told Zach. Told Zach. And then Zach, Zach told Kristen. Told Kristen. Yeah. And then now Zach is mad that Kristen couldn't keep a secret, even though Zach is the one who couldn't keep Jasmine's secret. Right. Um, okay. Well, rather than it being a point that you guys are all talking a bunch of shit, bring it to my front door. And I was the only one to say it out loud. I love when people do that too, when they try to like, they try to like uh, brand their messiness as some sort of like virtuous, uh, like outburst of honesty because no one else can be honest like they are. I'm just being honest, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so then uh, we see a flashback to Kristen talking to Zach two days ago. And she says, I mean, I know the shit that Janet said about Michelle Lolly. Am I wrong? And he goes, you are not wrong, Kristen. <laughs> they used this clip like five times this episode because it's so damning for Zach. And he's like, I never saw that. She's totally wrong. You are not wrong. <laughs> Yeah. So uh, Brittany uh, is like, well, I mean, you're the one who said it. And so you have to take some accountability for it. <laughs> and that's not what, that's how you're going to move on. Unless you're Jax, in which case you don't have to make any accountability because that's just what Jax does. <laughs> don't ask Jax to count nothing because he does it wrong anyway. <laughs> he don't got accountability. <laughs> so Kristen's like, okay, well, I said it out loud then. And the, the part that I took, and this is repeating it in front of everybody, was bad. She goes, yes, I'm glad you noticed, Kristen. She goes, okay, well, I can't deny the fact that I was told all of these things and it's been sitting inside me, literally bothering me. Literally bothering me. <laughs> I definitely feel like I hold a lot of responsibility to keep this group together because I love all these people and I don't want to be like having issues because then how are we going to do country fire day again? <laughs> and Kristen just smiles and she's like, something about summers, man. Right? Makes everybody crazy. <laughs> Kristen's like, here we are back again, just causing shit in the summertime like, old, like the old days. I know. It's LA. It's always summertime here. Let's be honest. So um, now we go to Michelle and Jesse having couples therapy with a non-therapist. So this guy, Scott, the life coach, he shows up and he's like, okay, hey, everyone. How's everyone, fun how are you guys functioning together? And Jesse's like, um, you mean with like dum-dum over here, this fucking bitch? <laughs> so um, he says that their, ther their counselor is not a therapist. He's more of a coach. And his goal is to make the best versions of themselves. And if the best versions of themselves are in love with each other, then their marriage will survive and get better. Yeah. And um, yeah. Michelle's like, yeah, Scott worked on our friend's marriage, and that really improved and helped their marriage. So maybe it can help and improve our marriage, too. And um, 
So they have spoken on the phone, but this is the first time they're meeting in person. So Scott's like, so how do you feel after the call? Do you guys feel like there's anything that came up after we talked? Like anything you want to revisit? And Jesse's like, I mean, it's just constant conflict. And then we flash back to Jesse berating Michelle for putting too much milk in his cereal. <laughs> He's like, God, such a conflict between cereal and milk. And Scott's like, so what are your needs in this relationship that aren't being met? And Michelle's like, um, a lot of needs are like not being met. But what? A lot of needs. I felt lonely for like a very long time. He wouldn't even come to Washington with me on January 6th. So like raising a child can feel very lonely when you're not interacting with adults and especially a partner. I just, I get frustrated because he doesn't understand how I feel. I'm no longer affectionate and he's not either. I mean, I just want him to rally. <laughs> it's like, I'm trying to get him into bed and I'm just like, I leave little breadcrumbs. I'm like, follow the breadcrumbs, follow the breadcrumbs. <laughs> he says, how can I make this better? And I say, do the research, you know, <laughs> do the research. <laughs> I mean, look, I know it's a long road, but we're not out of the James Woods yet. And the guy's like, so basically what you're saying is you're not getting any tenderness. And she's like, yeah, well, it's like the opposite. He's very hard on me, you know? Like, no matter what I do, nothing's enough. And he's so OCD on the house, you know? Like, he, he doesn't even he, want to he, he doesn't even. <laughs> he doesn't want the house to even look like we have kids in it. Or even me. He's actually removed all the photos of me. And he changed the locks. I have to Fred Flintstone to get inside. Do you know how many times I've had to watch Dino go into our house and lock me out? <laughs> um, so Jesse's like, well, everything she's saying, I'm just like, uh, like trying to figure out examples. Uh, like he's totally disconnected. He doesn't seem to have any feelings and he's very confused as to why he's even got to do this. Right. Yeah. And he's like, so you don't, I'm hard on her. Like, who cares? You know, that's kind of his look. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out examples. And Scott's like, don't be a lawyer. Just sit with what you heard. And <laughs> Scott's like, well, she's walking on eggshells. And she, it's like she's tiptoeing to everything. Oh, Scott's saying this. She has to, she's tiptoeing and saying everything has to be your way. And um, just, Jesse's just says, like, I wonder, like, if I was more of a passive husband and partner, would she still like me? <laughs> would if she I still like me this pussy, much? <laughs> if I were more of a pussy, would she be happier then? Because that's just not my nature. It's like, oh, shut up, Jesse. You know, I'm. I, I love him what, asking, like, is it just that I'm an asshole? She's literally saying you're an asshole. He's like, <laughs> I wonder if I was less of an asshole, if that would make a difference. Yeah, she's saying you're an asshole, Jesse. But he's, but that's so condescending because he says, maybe if I was just a more passive husband and father, she'd be happier. Meaning, suggesting like, if he weren't the alpha uh, making all these tough decisions, if he was just like a lame pussy, maybe she, maybe she would like it more. Like, you know what makes me happy? Because this guy's such a piece of shit. I love the fact that in all his interviews, he clearly earlier in the day had like a little headband on to put his hair back because we see him wearing it uh, earlier. And he doesn't realize it's left a dent in his hair. And in all his interviews, his hair like goes back and then there's like a dent and then it pops up again. Yeah. And I'm like, that's the best justice, knowing you went on TV with a dent in your hair, you know? But do you think he does that? On, I thought he did that on purpose because I noticed that he had headband hair and then we saw the headband and I was like, oh, I wonder if he does that to give himself that look. Like my little sister always had to go to sleep with her big foam curlers in so she would wake up with the with the hair she wanted, you know? <laughs> so I thought yeah, that was the LA realtor like, thing. He's like, I want my hair to look like a roller coaster. <laughs> People on this show are wild, man. Okay, look <laughs> they at are. Look at look at Kravitz next door. So um, Jesse's like, yeah, I mean, there's a disconnect, you know, because I did this no drinking fasting thing for five days. And I don't know, I lost like 12 pounds. And that's the first time she's given me a compliment. And like, I don't know. OK, so he's trying to make it sound like, oh, so I lost a little weight. So she was suddenly nice to me. No, you weren't fucking wasted all day, dude. Like, don't you think I'm, that might have something to do with her giving you a compliment as well? Like, and then she's like, well, I could say the same thing about you. Because not only do you not give me a compliment ever in your life, if I ask you, like, do I look nice? Like, I got a new dress or my hair or whatever, and it's time to go out. You're like, hmm, you're fine. 
And like, if I'm going to like, I'd like that he's trying to act like he's the victim in this, that he doesn't get enough positive feedback when like everything we've seen from this guy is that he is the biggest dick on this show. Like I am, this, I just, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't believe it. I'm not going to, I do not believe him as a victim in this marriage. Yeah, of course. Yeah. He's, he's a, He's gross. So then um, there, the guy's like, so when was the last time you were sexually attracted? She's like, ew. And he's like, oh, God, it's been like three years and nine months before she's felt any attraction, right? And she's like, it's been a while. So then Jesse's like, yeah, what even is sex? Oh, yeah, I guess I saw Pornhub the other day. Which I'm so jealous because Texas has gotten rid of that. So that's, for, like, that's so wild that Texas has banned Pornhub. That is so What's Wild. so crazy about it? they didn't ban porn? They just made all these laws that all the porn sites are shutting down because or shutting down for Texas because they're trying to get your information in order to sign onto these sites or something. It's like a privacy violation. Like it's mm. a yeah, it's a right to privacy violation. So all these porn sites are shutting down. But what's so wild about it is you guys don't want people to have reproductive rights it's like you don't want people fucking but you don't you also don't want them masturbating do you just want all of our heads <laughs> popping off like what exactly do you want us to do do you just want us all waking up with s fucking stained sheets i mean what is yeah. the goal i just don't understand i think at this point all the porn's on twitter i think that's just where it is so um oh, but it's so short i just i need a storyline <laughs> i can't just have some penis you know I'm sorry, this is disgusting. No one, no one signed up for this conversation, but you know, it's like Twitter porn is just so short form. I don't just need a penis. I need like, you know, I'm here to fix your, you know, your water. Your water's out. Or I know, I love, I love the like, narrative in porn. I, I'm, you know, all the, all, all the porn that's on Twitter is very much like here's someone just like wagging their dick around on only. Yeah, I don't like that. Seconds. I like the plumber comes in, the whole thing. That's always so fun for me. I don't need just the, like, it's a guy sitting on a traffic cone. I need to know why he's on a traffic <laughs> cone. Was he trying to, was he trying to get somewhere and there were road workers in the way and then he was really frustrated and they talked him down by sitting him on a traffic cone. I mean, that's hot, you know, but just. <laughs> <laughs> <Talking down. laughs> Can't just, I need a store. Look at my dog. He's like, oh, Jesus Christ. Okay. <laughs> Bueller's so... like, I'm calling a meeting to session. <laughs> he is. He's like, we need to get Chairman back on Bueller. track here. I'm Chairman leaving. Bueller. Bueller is our CEO, by the way. I don't know if anyone realizes this, but Bueller's our boss. <laughs> Bueller's like, what are you two doing? You yep. represent a company. And the um, fact that he doesn't know a lot of English explains why we still have a job, both of us. <laughs> so, Jesse, back to this, this therapy session. Jesse's like, okay, let's say I only see the positives. And I say, oh, you look beautiful today. Oh, I love that dress on you. Oh, this. Oh, that. Is there a point where like, okay, I've been a great guy now for two months and you're still not treating me well? And Scott's like, but you know what though? Your attachment to the result is going to cause you to fail. Sort of like what you're trying to do with your hair right now. Like stop, stop going to sleep with your headband. <laughs> so this guy looks perplexed. He's like, what? And Michelle goes, yeah, because it's not genuine. And Scott says, yeah, you're supposed to do it because you want to do it. And he's like, uh... <laughs> I don't, I don't understand what like, you're wait, saying. I, I'm Scott's supposed like, to want to be nice to my wife? What? <laughs> yeah, it's like, that's disgusting. And he's like, yeah, if you're just trying to get something out of her, she's going to sniff that out, you know? And Jesse's just looking at him like, okay, you get paid for this? <laughs> you, you, you get paid for this? You fucking woman sympathizer? You literally and, make a living from this? Wow. And then Scott goes, it's showing up kind. It's warmth towards her. So she starts to cry and Jesse's like, why are you crying? I'm like, see, that's not warm. Or You're not up. listening. You see? Kindly. <laughs> so now we We're go awful. to Jason and Janet's, and she's like, I'm like pregnant, so like I want McDonald's. And he's like, but babe, we've got a full fridge. Okay, hit him. There's a divorce. <laughs> I told you this guy was evil. This guy pretends he's so fucking nice. This is the kind of things he says, but the fridge is full. I would divorce anybody who said that at any time. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I really like Janet a lot. I feel like I could hang with Janet. Like, I feel like I could just like talk shit with her. Um, she just, I really, I thought I was going to hate her. I thought she was going to be the worst of them all, but she's the one I like the most so far. Mm. No, I don't know. I don't, I don't, you know, what's so weird. I don't really dislike anybody on the show yet. You probably couldn't tell from the way I'm, <laughs> from the way I talk about it. I mean, Jesse, <laughs> maybe, don't dislike but... Jesse. 
I mean, Jax, obviously, but uh, Jesse, I mean, I, I don't think he's great, but I think I'm just so excited to have a good show on TV that right now I'm, I like them all. <laughs> You're just going to embrace them all. Um, but I, well, you can still embrace them all and have a favorite. And so I think right now Janet is my favorite, but I think part of, it may be influenced by the fact that she wants to get McDonald's and I've been craving McDonald's for like a week, but I've been trying to eat healthy because my inner Jason has been telling me to eat healthy and my inner Janet has been telling me to go to McDonald's and I'm, I'm like... I'm listening to Jason right now. Wow, Jason's such an asshole. Listen, <sighs> I wish I was around Jason right asshole. now so I could explain to him. Do you know why the refrigerator is full, Jason? Because it's full of shit I don't want to eat. Now go to fucking yeah. McDonald's. Or I'm Ugh, giving this I've been, baby up. I've been eating lentils. So, um, although I did have a lot of pasta last night, I'm not gonna lie. So anyway, Jason is, they're talking about the, the baby coming and everything and like the baby's gonna sleep. He's like, the baby's gonna sleep next to us for like the first six months in a bassinet. And she goes, well, I hope so. Otherwise the baby's not, the baby's gonna be like sleeping. And he goes like, what do you mean? I hope so. But like, what are you gonna say? Like, no, no to the baby being in the bassinet. And she's like, um, well, like, I don't want it sleeping right on top of us. Get me some fucking McDonald's basically. So they're talking <laughs> about how they get to, gotta get the nursery done. And then the McDonald's is delivered. And I think that's why you like them because I think you like the privilege of Uber Eats delivering McDonald's. <laughs> Something about her McDonald's. That's your, uh, that's your porn right there. <laughs> it is. Just like, simple things oh, being yeah. delivered. Simple, I was like, yeah. Like I literally, you know what? Like yesterday, I, uh, like at 6 p.m., I was like, you know, oh, you know what I need? I needed some more of those cube chargers. Okay, I'm gonna throw it onto my Amazon order. I went out to game night. I came back at 1 a.m. They were there on my doorstep already. I was like, God, I love when a simple thing gets delivered. Way I ahead of time. I love simple things being delivered. I'll sometimes split up the delivery just so I can get things more often. <laughs> I do that with, with McDonald's. Like, what will happen is on Monday, I'll get the bun. And then on Tuesday, I'll get the patty. And then on Thursday, I'll get the other bun. And by Friday, I can eat most of it. God, we just love our capitalism, don't we? <laughs> I love that we're reveling in this on the Republican episode of this episode of this series. Like, mm, God, I just love, um, what do they call it? Read consuming things. I just love consumerism. Mm, delicious. Reaganomics is back. Um, I have to <laughs> drip down, bitch. Drip down. Anyway, what are we, I, wanna, I don't even know what we're talking about McDonald's. anymore. So uh, it's, a, it's basic God. people talking about McDonald's. So then we go to talking about the Kristen of it all. And she's like, I woke up like feeling like exhausted today because like Kristen, I'm just like, I don't know, like I'm confused. And then today, like she posted on her story, she posted, I would rather adjust my life to your absence than adjust my boundaries to accommodate your disrespect. I love that Kristen posts shit in sentence structures she could never use in a million years. I've never yeah. heard Kristen talk like that. I also love Janet like getting offended by this meme, not realizing that this is Kristen and like this was actually probably Kristen reacted to her own Uber Eats delivery that didn't show up. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> hey, Uber Eats, I would rather adjust to my life in your absence than adjust my boundaries to accommodate your disrespect. Uh -huh. The super was late to fix her sink. <laughs> I've heard her taking it all seriously. So Jason's like, but wait, why do you think she feels disrespected? Do you think? Do you think that she feels like, I don't know, your salad makings, your salad fixings in a refrigerator just waiting to be chopped up and eaten? Well, <laughs> the person and who bought you is actually ordering fast food on the internet. <laughs> I don't know. But like, you know what? You threw me under the bus. You threw Michelle under the bus, Zach under the bus. Jasmine under the bus, we're all under the bus. Why were we all standing in the middle of the road? That's a different story, but whatever, all in one soup. And I said something small, you know, just a, a teeny weeny little thing. You know, Michelle's just like Republican and racist. And Kristen made it so big, she just didn't even, she just like didn't run with it. I mean, she like ran a marathon with it. She ran a marathon, but also drove a bus and drove us over it. She basically had, she was running a marathon inside a bus that drove us over us and we were the spectators to the marathon. Are my metaphors making sense to anyone else? <laughs> so they were talking about the don't say gay laws in Florida, right? right. So apparently Jan apparently Michelle said something like those laws don't hurt children. Someone said those or laws hurt children, children or something. Yeah, oh no, they wait, what the, what was it? They protect She said children. that she said Janet says that they were talking 
because uh, this brain trust was having a discussion about politics. And Michelle said, oh, don't, gay, don't say gay laws protect children. And Janet was like, no, 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 you're wrong. So that's where that's where it came from. So then Janet children. OK, well, right. listen, that's enough for me. If you believe in don't say gay laws, you can go fuck yourself. And that's yeah. the end of it. Normally, we don't love talking about politics on this show because it's uh, you just shouldn't. Everybody's from a political different political whatever. That's fine. But this is a pretty bad one. Don't say gay. Do you know how far that can be taken and used against people who are gay, who happen people to have something on their Facebook, die. or who have something on their Twitter, or who who can have their entire lives ruined because of fucking religious fanatic assholes? So fuck you guys, and fuck Michelle for fucking saying that. Fuck her. And I don't know why everybody's going around defending her. Like, how could you say that she said that? If she said it, then fuck her. Then she needs to get rolled out on the mat like everybody else does on this show. Why is Kristen still... Well, I know why Kristen is and she deserves that too, by the way. Mm -hmm. But we know why Kristen's still getting it on this show and no one's complaining about that. They all feel fine turning it against Kristen at the end of this show. So make it fair. Ask Michelle why she, if she said it and why she said it. I would love to know. They should. And so Janet then uh, is basically actually kind of excuse. Next, she's trying to like sort of mollify it, saying, well, you know, I never thought that she was racist or homophobic. I just thought she got like swept into an algorithm when she was, you know, looking, researching Stop the Steal. And, um, you know, like. <laughs> I mean, who likes stealing? Am I right? No one who likes gets, stealing. By the way, who gets swept into an algorithm about Don't Say Gay? And then it's like, oh, okay, I'm going to read this. I'm Oh, this this looks great. Okay. It's like, mm, that doesn't happen by accident. But she, either way, Janet still says, Listen, I just I think she got swept into an algorithm and she maybe got went went down a path and she just needed to be like educated and adjusted or whatever. It's like, well, okay, if you do believe that, like if one of my friends, if one of my dear friends did go down a path like that, I don't think if I was concerned about them and I wanted to make sure they were educated, I then wouldn't go like talk to the gossipy people in my group and be like, by the way, did you hear? So and so now totally believes in QAnon, you know, because it's like if you're trying to protect them, if you're trying to go from a place of like I want to bring them back in, but Janet's like saying they got she got swept up into an algorithm, but then she goes and tells everyone. By the way, do you hear about this? So she's kind of playing both sides. She's playing, but she doesn't want to get in trouble for being the one to tell on this girl. But she is still anti this girl because it's obviously a stupid thing to say. Or it's, it's obviously something she doesn't agree with. You know what I mean? Yeah. And as far as having people in your life who don't think the same as you, we all do. And we can all pretend like, oh, everybody I know thinks just like me. And I'm the only people I'll speak to think just like me. I'm from a very conservative Christian family. I hear this shit all day long. And I know that the Fox News brainwashes them. Like Some of the shit that comes out of their mouth sometimes times is ridiculous like the conversations i've had to have over the past few years are brain numbing honestly like they really have people believing that drag queens are coming in and teaching them all like the c word and like you know how to <laughs> how to do circus sex acts on each other i mean it's just fucking crazy the things that they're being told and the things yeah. that they're believing you know what i mean so i feel like most of us have to have these conversations in our lives um and people shouldn't be going around apologizing for people who believe those things. Tell me what you believe and let's have a talk about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's better than just, it's better than the alternative, which is this, everybody hand wringing and like, oh my God, I can't believe I just called some, you know what's worse? Ruining gay people's lives yeah. over stupid fucking ignorant religious laws. That's and worse. by the way, and there, there's no flat out denials about any of the stuff that, that was said about Michelle. Actually, to be fair, by the way, to be fair, this is all what Janet is saying that Michelle said. So everything that has been up for debate is whether or not Janet actually said this. We don't actually know what Michelle? Michelle's. No, that's but no, true. we don't actually know what Michelle said. To right. be fair, we don't know. Like we're. And I'm that's just true. joking. Before, stuff, I, before like, I go off on Michelle, I guess that is. We part only of know it. what. The point is that like what the whole issue is that Janet said these things. And uh, Janet at first is like, I never said that, but then has now said, well, no, I said this thing. And then Zach is like, I never said that. I mean, I said it, but I never said, said it like that. So like, it's really about Janet right now. And we haven't gotten to like, did Michelle say these things and believe these things? Right.
Okay, so Jason's like, well, in the future, maybe be cautious with anything that can potentially get to Kristen. <laughs> She's like, yeah, no shit, Jason. You think so I'm don't saying? say anything on the show. Yeah. <laughs> So she's like, yeah, there's, there's going to need to be an apology. And if she's not receptive, then I'm going to need a break from her. So <laughs> now is a Capri party. Michelle and Jesse are getting ready to throw this Italy party in one of their big listing mansions. Yeah. And um, everyone's excited to go because it's like a $20 million house. Janet zillowed it. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, they're all. This is, by the way, way too fancy a house for this show. Like this is, there's no way, there's no reason for these people to be, they, they should be in a bungalow off of Laurel Canyon Boulevard right now, you know, Laurel Canyon and Victory Boulevard in the Valley, not in some mansion overlooking the city right now. Uh, this is um, off brand. So Jesse and Michelle are getting ready and he's like, this is an important night for me. Okay. We're doing a Capri theme. And she's like, for you, for us, this is our party. And you're, you're wearing a suit and he goes, it's important to me because you don't love Capri as much as I do. Oh, okay. oh, sorry. Sorry. I didn't realize that your love for Capri was like a very important thing. <laughs> I didn't realize. I wish this your was therapist to was here to see how you're, how you're defending Capri the way your wife would like you to speak to her one time in your marriage. <laughs> you yeah. are nicer to an Island that doesn't give a shit about you and that you don't fit in with than you are to your wife. You only like that Island because it's similar to the kind of pants you're trying to pull off constantly. <laughs> So uh, he's like, we're about to throw this extremely exp ex expensive party at this beautiful listing that we have. And it's going to be an homage to the island that I have fallen in love with. I call it Not Michelle Island. Every year we go to Capri in Italy, in case you don't know where that is, dumbasses. It has Michelin star restaurants. It has the best hotels. And if you want to go to a place where all the billionaires have their yachts parked, because that's you want you want to go there because that's you're going to sell to, man. I'm like, okay. Just go to the Buco de Beppo like and this. then see I love people. He's like sitting with his, you know, he's doing that like arm on the back of his chair. Like, let me tell you where you go if you really want to meet a billionaire. You're a salesman. You're not a billionaire. You know what I mean? If he was like some billionaire sitting there like, Ugh. speaking of politics, I'm George Soros. I'm on a yacht planning to ruin all of the Republicans' lives. <laughs> <laughs> That's one thing. But just to be like, wow, I know where billionaire goes, where billionaires go so I can Ding dong them and try and try and sell them some real estate. Okay, Jesse is finally using all the material he's been aching to put on camera for the past ten years. He's probably probably been auditioning for a million dollar listing. He's like, finally, I can do my spiel. So, um, uh, by the way, I just there's something about like being a high end realtor, um, and then being stuck on this show, The Valley, that just does not work. Like he's. Yeah. Dreams of being on Selling Sunset or buying Beverly Hills or Million Dollar Listing, but he's stuck as like a side character on a show that has like a country fair in Jax's backyard. <laughs> yeah. That's rough. That's a rough Welcome life. to the juxtaposition. Jax so then we go over to, uh, they're basically just nagging each other. You know, he's like, can we yeah. try and enjoy ourselves tonight? She's like, yeah, that's what I'm saying. And he's like, he's like, it's not a party. This is sophisticated. She goes, stop saying sophisticated so much. It doesn't make you sound sophisticated. He's like, but it is sophisticated. She's like, but if it wasn't, you wouldn't have to say it. Okay. I hate you both. Honestly, <laughs> even though I know that I know. I'm signed up for this show and this is what I'm going to be getting. This is like Carl. And, this is Kyle and Amanda. This is our new Kyle and Amanda on a different night of the week. I know. Um, so then we go over to Jax and Brittany and Jax is wearing uh, tight pants. He's like, tight pants is what they wear in Italy, right? Like the only Capri I know is Capri Suns. Oh, Jax. You're a cool guy, Jax. You're a cool guy. Don't you love that? Capri Sun made a double appearance tonight because uh, Sheena got one on Vanderpump Rules too. It's like, I love Capri Sun. Capri Sun is really cleaning up on Bravo. Big so now we go to Capri Suns. Yeah, now we go to Danny and Nia's house and um, Nia's like, honey, that's like not the look. It looks cheap. Like, it doesn't even look like you're from Italy, huh? And he's like, I love cheap. <laughs> I'm so glad you're back home. I said, yeah, I was falling asleep while I was doing all the things because I was like so tired. 
And he's like, the kids wouldn't stop screaming. I mean, I had three under two. It was crazy. And she goes, yeah, well, I think while they were screaming, I was having a chocolate martini in the lobby. <sighs> Don't it was worry, delicious, I was pumping Daniel. at the same time. <laughs> uh, so now we're at the party. And so Jesse and Michelle are taking selfies and Zach and Jasmine and um, Jasmine's girlfriend, Melissa, are riding in the party together. And Jasmine's like, um, your outfit actually looks kind of Greek. He's like, yeah, I think it's like I'm an American tourist in Italy. Like, I'm ready for food, though. Like, I'm so hungry today. So then um, Jasmine talks about her girlfriend and how her girlfriend graduated with her brother. And when she moved to L.A., they were like comfort for each other. And then she's just a fluid person. But since we have to have a label, I guess she's bisexual now. Mm -hmm. So then everybody arrives at the party and they're mingling and making small talk about linen, etc. And <laughs> Jax is like, I fucking hate dressing up. Not only do I have to dress up, it has to be linen. The fuck? <laughs> Zach is like, I'm not in linen because I'm not rich to buy a linen suit. And like, um, he didn't care to dress up for the country theme that we had, so whatever. <laughs> Uh, I love I love that Zach is kind of like the poor one of the group. He's just like the the poor gay hanger on. who's <laughs> like I don't. I, I, this is from H and M, and I say that as someone wearing an H and M shirt right now. I love H and M, but goddamn, it's so uncomfortable. And I don't really love it. You know what? I lost some weight this year, so I was finally able to go to H and M because I was never able to go in there before. And like literally, they would beat me out. <laughs> They'd be like, "Get out!" No, but I was able to go there, and I bought some clothes from there. I have to say. I've been looking in their windows for many years, being like, I want to shop in there. Mm, not comfortable. You guys need to work on your comfort level. And also yeah. aim your seams better. The seams aren't correct. Seams are a little, yeah. And also all off. the pants are so short because I think trendy guys really like short pants still. Well, you know what they, they call those short pants? Capri pants. <laughs> yeah. It all comes true. back to Capri. Full circle. I love Capri. So then Danny is like, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to perform a double pike 180 sailor dive because he's going to pretend like he's going to jump into the pool. And they're like, no, Danny, this isn't your house, Danny. Wacky Danny. So, so now Kristen and Luke are worried about the night. And Luke's like, I'm really hoping for peace. You know, I hope I don't have to go up against Ruben Stoddard again. He was really a difficult, <laughs> really, really competition for me. And Kristen's like, oh, Michelle and Jesse are hosting this. So I want to make sure that I could just have a quick qu conversation with Michelle. I'm sure it's going to be fine. I mean, I'm showing up to their party in Birkenstocks. Who's going to get mad? <laughs> Um, so now Zach is at the party. Zach is talking to Janet about Kristen and he's like, Kristen took like nine different conversations and put them all together. And Janet's like, yeah, tonight I really need her to admit that she fully mixed this up by saying exactly what we said. That was so <laughs> wrong of her. So, um, they're, they see her come in they're like, oh no. And Janet says, great. I'm sure she's going to come up like nothing's wrong. And Kristen's saying, yeah, saying hello to people and asking where Michelle is. And um, by the way, my favorite like, thing, sorry, okay. my favorite thing is when people do that, when they're like, she's going to walk in like nothing is wrong. Watch. Because if you walk in like, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, they're like, oh my God, what an attitude. She just walked in with an attitude. But then so if you aggressive. walk in trying to be polite, it's like, oh, she's acting like nothing happened. <laughs> it's like you just can't win in those situations. Yeah. Um, okay, so what happens next? Jesse goes, you know, I think Michelle has a pretty tough skin, even though she sucks. Sorry, that's my wife I'm talking about. But coming from a first generation, half Persian, half Mexican, whose father escaped Iran because of religious persecution, to be labeled a racist is just absurd. Call her what she really is. Stupid. <laughs> that's my wife. Sorry. That's how I talk sexy to her. <laughs> So um, Kristen asks Michelle to talk, and she's like, mm, maybe later. So the group is going to yell at you, and then we can have one on mind. <laughs> no apologies until you get publicly flogged, okay? So now they go sit at this big, long table for their big Italian meal, and Jax is like, uh, thank you, Jesse. Uh, thanks for having us all here. Uh, this is about as close to Italy as, as you're going to get, sweetheart. Right, Brittany? <laughs> right, Brittany? <laughs> 
Hey, Ronnie, could you do the, uh, I have, I have someone at my door. Could you do Britney, uh, a Britney interlude, please, for a moment? Sure. Well, I just wanted to say something. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic from which it stands. Nothing is Jackson's fault. He didn't do nothing. So, um, Jax starts eating pasta. Look, I was going to say Jax starts eating pasta the way that you think Jax would start eating pasta, but I would think that Jax would start just snorting the pasta up like he's doing a version of Lady and the Tramp with just himself and his nose. But he doesn't. He's much classier about it. He starts eating spaghetti with his fingers um, because he's Jax, pretty much. So everyone sits down, and they all start to eat. And um, Michelle's like, wow, do you think this is the most civil everybody will ever be in the same spot together? And Janet's like, I don't think she realizes how seriously mad I am. Brittany's like, oh, don't worry. I told her about it so she knows. <laughs> and Janet's like, I didn't respond to any text messages. Did anybody else respond to text messages? And they're like, no, we didn't either. And um, I love that they're avoiding Kristen like she's a Republican. <laughs> it's it's kind of funny, actually, when you think about it. So Janet's like, it's unbelievable. Kristen can ignore even the most obvious of tensions and scenarios and pretend like Hi, nothing is wrong. Hi, sorry about that. Subtle return, Ben. Subtle return, okay? <laughs> Jeez. What kind of landing was that? <laughs> I just get so excited, you know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry about that. It's okay, yeah, yeah. So Janet's saying, yeah, it's just annoying to see everybody flippantly ignoring what Kristen did and what's really happening here. John John John. And then we see Kristen cracking up at something. She's like, oh, that was hilarious. <laughs> so Michelle's like, it's one thing to have to like have a conversation with somebody, but it's like another thing. To actually listen. Janet's like, and you know what? You don't have to listen to anything that gays say if we get these laws passed because they're not allowed to say anything. If you don't say gay, then you don't have to listen to the word gay. <laughs> <laughs> so really, you should be in favor of it if you don't like listening to things. Oh. Um, so Kristen's like, oh, excuse me. Uh, does this feel like inappropriate at a dinner table? And Janet's like, um, I mean, to be honest, I missed the last time we were all together, but a lot happened. Namely, that I got some McDonald's. But other than that, I personally would like to know what happened with you guys while I was eating my Big Mac. And so Michelle's like, yeah, I think everybody's involved now, so we could we should speak publicly because I'm tired of she said, she said, Turtlehead said. <laughs> So if we're all at one table, then we can all be on the same page. And Janet goes, I agree. Kristen decided at Michelle's part at Michelle's to say that I said that Michelle was racist, which I have never thought in my life. Like, why would I have to think something that is just like evidence, right? So let alone, I would never even say that out loud. And I don't know where that came from, but I'm also like disgusted by it, Kristen. Well, I love that she's just keeping it racist. You noticed? Because yeah. I mean, like, where's all the homophobic stuff? I like that they're just like, let's just pin it, let's just pin on the stuff that we didn't actually say, so we don't have to talk about the other stuff in this episode. You know, it yeah. feels uh, it feels tailored, okay? Which, uh, unlike all of your clothes in this episode, it feels tailored. So, um, by the way, you'd like that I'm suddenly a tailoring snob. I'm an old navy queen. I, don't like <laughs> I know we Come really on, guys. The the H and M seems you know I have a sewing class I have my first stretch sewing class after this I'm gonna be learning how to sew sweat like sweatshirts and leggings so uh, I'm I'm in a sewing state of mind today as well. Well, you costume Kristen. Okay, so then um, they start talking about this. So Janet's like, yeah, you know, Kristen decided at Michelle's to say that I said that Michelle was racist, which I've never thought in my life. And so Kristen's like, it came from Zach. And Zach's like, it did not come from me, Kristen. Hold on, I'm going to hide behind this tree. Chris, Michelle, I did not say that. I did not. Zach, you, Zach, you left your hair at the table. So, uh... <laughs> 
<laughs> Zach is like, Zach is like, Kristen held all this information and got all of it like completely mixed up. And like, you want to talk about a shit stew? Like, there's there was no recipe. She was just like grabbing numbers out, like they were fucking in the Powerball. So <laughs> you need to get your metaphors together. <laughs> They're all they're shit stew like coming out of the Powerball machine. I'm not, like my brain can't take it. It's too much. She was making shit stew while she was in her bus racing to get her Powerball ticket and ran us all over at the marathon. <laughs> so he goes, I think this is still him. Who's this saying? The game of telephone was the Janet to Jasmine to Zach to me and to Luke. So that so you're like uh, telling Jasmine that she should be, I guess this is Kristen. You're telling yeah. Jasmine that she should be cautious of Michelle because she's a quote unquote Republican. And what Zach insinuated at my house to Luke and I was that that would equal racism or slash and homophobia or whatever. So Jasmine's like, you better take my name out of this because I never had a conversation with uh, this one, Kristen, about anybody or at this table ever. So I'm upset about that. And she says, you know, she's experienced racism and to have a friend just like, just throw it out lightly like that. It's like not fair. It's not fair for Michelle. It's not fair for her and for the whole group. And Zach is like, I've known Michelle for a while. She is not homophobic and I love her to pieces. And I really hate that. Unfortunately, this got said by me to Kristen. <laughs> it's totally him. It is totally him. So Kristen's like, well, I just want to immediately apologize to Michelle because I felt cornered and I should not have said those things out loud, especially at your home. And Jesse's like, just say that you lied. Call it a lie and don't call it anything else. And she's like, I did not lie. And so Luke's like, you better calm down, mister. And so now the guys Excuse are going me. on it. Excuse and me. No, calm down. Excuse me. Calm down. Yeah. And Luke's like, this literal sack of shit that twisted Kristen's nipple, now he's attacking <laughs> Kristen. <laughs> Oh, he's like, he wasn't there. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. That strike, too. And those are big strikes. So um, Jesse... Can we not bring up the three strikes law while we're talking about Republicans? Okay? <laughs> like, you guys need to decide whether we're going to talk about politics or whether we're not going to talk about politics. Okay? Michelle's like, I'm allowed to stand my ground. So Jesse's... <laughs> So Jesse's like, you do not tell me to calm down. Luke says, yeah, but you're getting too damn aggressive because I'm going to yell at you for being aggressive. And he's like, you do not tell me. And Luke goes, anyway, just, you know, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Yeah, and Luke's like, if you're going to talk to me, we can go right now. And Jesse's like, oh, okay. Oh, Kristen, you're a fucking liar. You walk into my house. And she's like, oh, I was just trying to. And Jesse's like, you shut the fuck up, Kristen. So Luke stands up in his chair, and he's threatening Jess. They're very manly. It's very, like, pointing. You, you shut the fuck up, Jesse. You shut the fuck up. You shut the fuck up. I'm going to throw a ball and catch it. I'm the man. I'm a man. I go to sleep with a headband up on the back of my head. So, uh, just like, sit your fucking ass down right now. You fucking lied. And Lucas, apologize. Don't come at her. And then Jax is like, this is not going to work. Jax looking the best he's looked in years with these two idiots. Uh, yeah. So then, um, now where does this go? So, so Jax is like, I don't think this is working. <laughs> And yeah. Michelle says, well, she's not saying the truth. And Jesse says, well, she's not saying anything. She's dancing around it. And he goes, but how do you know, guys? How do you know she's not telling the truth? And Michelle's like, because they're the ones saying They're saying it. I feel like Kristen was like trying to apologize, but like no one was listening to her and she couldn't do anything right. And it's unfortunate to see. So I feel like her making an effort and like when nothing was productive was going to come from it. So Janet's like, well, it's changed everything. Like, I don't like it. And Chris is like, I, like, I don't trust a word that comes out of your mouth. Though. But I didn't make it up. It came from Zach. It came from Zach. <laughs> So then Kristen turns into this victim. Then then this turns into the Kristen victim monologue where she's like, I mean, let's be honest. Given my past, I'm a pretty easy target. And then we see a clip of Kristen just going crazy over the years. And oh, no. Uh, well, her. No, I'm over. sorry. I thought this, I thought this was her her faith moment, but this isn't her faith moment yet. So no, no, she's not that. No, this is just her her just her non-problematic um, <laughs> wild behavior. Right. Suck a dick, Diana. Yeah, this is the this is the good old fashioned problematic. So um, she's saying, lobby. you know, I guess I'm just so honest, you know, which is this, this is like classic Christian, by the way. Like everyone's just mad at me because I'm just at heart, I'm the most honest person here. I just love honesty so much. 
you know what? Zach knows that. He fibbed and he knows that I'm right. I wasn't always this way, but now I'm just a walking truth serum. Kaka. And yeah, it might rub people the wrong way, but all right, here I am. Take it or leave it. Truth serum driving a bus during a marathon. And then Janet's like, but if you thought that I thought Michelle was racist, why wouldn't you call me? Why the fuck would I call you? If you thought Michelle was racist, that doesn't make any sense. What do I care if you think that she's racist? I'm just gossiping. I have to call everybody I gossip about. Give me a fucking break, McDonald's. So Jason's like, yeah, why not call Janet? I'm here too. So Kristen's like, well then, Zach, I wish you hadn't brought it to my front door to try to make Janet look bad. And Janet's like, he didn't. It was all on you, Kristen. And Jesse's like, yeah, well, I wish you didn't bring it to my front door. And Luke goes, you mean from Zach? So then um, Luke's like, okay, so you're just saying she shouldn't have brought it up at all. And now Jesse's screaming and pounding the table. He's like, everybody shut the fuck up. Michelle's going to talk. And Luke, don't you talk to me that way again. Here's what I have to say. Thanks, Obama. <laughs> Take it over, Michelle. Zach has said he did not say that. Janet said she did not say that. I believe that everybody in this table would not be my friend if they thought that. And Kristen goes, I don't think that, Michelle. She goes, <laughs> so, but well, that's, that's not, not what I, said, I just Kristen. said. So Zach's like, well, I don't know how it became like I said that Janet said that because it's like completely not the truth. But what I will tell you is if you call someone a Republican in LA, that's a death sentence. That is social suicide. You better be on the DL if you're a Republican because you are not getting invited to anything. <laughs> that's probably very true <laughs> and by the way our friend neil who has the past present podcast he has a book that literally uh today was the pub day it literally is arriving today hit bookshelves today called coming out republican which is a book about uh gay republicans so if this is something that is interesting to you go check out oh neil's God. book and that's i think that that's actually a good example of what we're talking about like being Cancel for being Republican or whatever. Because I see that on his Instagram and I'm like, oh, I cringe every time. I'm like, oh, Neil, no. Because it looks like Neil's like, I'm a gay Republican, you know, because he has like a real conservative haircut and he's just like this white blonde guy. He's like, I wrote a book about coming out Republican. It looks like he's coming out Republican. And it just goes to show you that what they're saying is true because I see that and I'm like, oh, Neil, no, don't do it. You in danger, girl. <laughs> well, I can assure you that Neil is. Uh, definitely not a Republican. Um, but uh, if it's something that you're interested in, go check out Neil's book, everyone. Support yeah, we love that other guy. women. We, we, love, love Neil. we love Neil. We love Congratulations Neil. on the new project. Uh, so, so um, yeah. So uh, Jesse says, he's like, you, dis you disrespected my family name. I'm like, maybe you also did that when you twisted uh, Kristen's nipple. I'm not sure. He's like, we have a business that we run together. You know, if something like that gets out, you're ruining lives, the lives of two realtors. Oh God, it's it's another red scare, you know? Yeah. It's like the so Republicans literally. are red. That's funny, I've never thought of it that way. Michelle's like, not only that, and he just holds up his hand, he goes, hold on. Like, okay, Michelle, please. I'm talking about you, you don't get to talk, okay? <laughs> you, you were thrown off the fucking show for being an actual racist, Kristen. What did you call me? <laughs> Which I was like, wow, he went there. But of course he would go there. Yeah, I'm actually, so... it's sort of funny that the show is acknowledging it, but this is now where the Valley acknowledges Kristen's role in her controversy. Yeah, we knew they had to in some way. It's interesting, this is the way they did it. Um, and it was all kind of caused by Kristen. Like, dumb, dumb. So. Basically, she's like, well, I know that I made a mistake by roping Michelle into something, but Jesse's just trying to ruin my name by bringing up the most painful thing that I've ever gone through. And this is where it's like the Kristen kind of victim moment. Yeah, Kristen. And she starts talking about how she was canceled. So Jesse's like, but did you not, Kristen? Is it not a true statement? And Luke is like, we're gonna go. This isn't true. <laughs> And so Kristen has a monologue saying like, I understand why Michelle's upset. It's the worst thing in the world to be labeled as anything, let alone a racist. And nobody knows better than me because it happened to me and I was canceled. <laughs> it was probably the hardest time of my life when I was called out for behavior that could have sent someone to jail. And yeah, I'm not proud of what I did. I'm sorry that I hurt people, but I've learned from my mistakes. There are my friends sitting there 
and they know my past, and all I wanted to do is pick up the pieces and move on with my life, be a good person. It's like the people finally gave me a chance again, and now it's like it's brought up all over again, and I'm gonna have to relive it again. Hope that my life doesn't fall apart again. Oh, Marabasa. It's like, okay, okay, ma'am. And then we <laughs> see the headlines. 2020, June 7th, 2020. Kristen Doty apologizes to former co-star Faith Stowers. Uh, June 7th, again. Kristen Doty says she's learning about unconscious bias after firing, which I thought was kind of funny only because that's just what Trishelle said after her. She's like, I'm going to look into some unconscious bias classes. <laughs> so I guess that's just what people tell you to say. That's what you do. Once, yeah. you're, once you're called a racist, that's like how you redeem your redeem yourself so all the stuff that happened with faith i will say at that time i remember when that went down because that was anti Jax and anti uh not really Jax. i mean Jax got the least of it but it was mostly kristen and stassi because they went on wasn't it on bitch bible that stassi went on uh, bitch bible and was talking about how they hate faith and they know faith does all this terrible stuff because Kristen found a video of faith wearing a jacket that she stole from Logan. Wasn't it Logan? It was and some they, story. It was some story that was like along the lines of like someone was stealing things. She was robbing old, she was robbing like rich men, something like that. Like they were accusing faith of being this woman who was, uh, the police were looking for and there was video footage of this woman and that the police were looking for uh that was robbing men or something and they were just, like i yeah. know it's faith because she's been stealing stuff everybody was accusing faith of stealing stuff and right. so Kristen and stassi like called the fbi or something and or called the police and tried to turn in faith right which is like they were like clearly acting it's like okay just because there's like a video of a black woman it's like doesn't mean right. that like oh Therefore, oh, Faith's black. It's probably her. You know, right. that's that's it was it was really really bad. It and, was bad. Uh, uh, you know, and, and it like happened Faith, a while before and very, that. Yeah, it, it happened like two happen years before, but Faith brought it yeah. up at that time, and uh, like obviously very irresponsible. Aside from the fact that it was profiling, but it's like it's irresponsible, and you know, like it's it's a it could be a very dangerous situation for a black woman and um as we've seen from people like Sandra Bland etc so uh it was it was really really bad and it was um, also just the constant coming after someone publicly who was barely even on the show i mean faith was hardly even on that show there was she a fixation was... they were all fixated i mean that like i said before they were talking about like lala was talking about faith at that pool and she was saying the same things about faith stealing things and whatever but Lala didn't call the cops on Faith. Lala was just like, whatever, Faith is sketchy. Because by the way, Faith can still be sketchy, but calling the cops on Faith for this thing, I mean, I don't know. I don't have to get into it all over again. But yeah, Kristen was definitely part of something. But they didn't really get into it something. on the show. So, I mean, for those of you who don't remember or whatever, that's basically what happened. And so uh, they, were you know, they were all basically fired from the show. And then they recast the show for the next season and then those guys all got fired for racism stuff too max and um what's the other, the, guy. the other guy's name who i mean Dude, my god the whatever. show like so anyway so after all that happened faith has given interviews since then and from what i understand she said that she forgives kristen because like kristen did have a pretty kristen was just like i'm sorry like i did it guilty you know, and I feel so like, like her her role in it was like a little smaller, right? I think, or like no. I felt like no, it wasn't. Well, I'm, no. I'm not trying to give. No, I'm not trying to let her. She off was the one who was like, "This is the this is the woman on this video footage that oh. I saw on the news or whatever." But um, yeah, so that's basically what happened with that. So um, now they're bringing it back up and throwing it in her face, which of course, I mean, they're gonna do. You bring. The thing is, she's saying, like, I understand how this would affect other people, but then she's kind of doing it to those people as well. But I really need Michelle to be asked the question about that don't say gay law. Because... Yeah, that's what I'm... That's that's ultimately what, what it comes down to for me, is that, like, I would love to know what the deal is. Because that's so bad. It's so bad to, be, to say that don't say gay protects children, because it does not. How to, like, I don't know how that would protect children. Especially like, and, and if we're concerned about like societal things protecting children, how about we start like banning all sorts of other things? Because by the way, drag queens are the least of the issues. 
Um, but I mean, I'm not, I'm not advocating for things to be banned. The point is that the hypocrisy of this, that there's lots of other hideous, toxic influences on children that no one cares about. What about putting this energy towards guns? How about that? Cause guess what? That's my issue. But you know what? <laughs> we don't need to get political on this show any more than we already have. That was the end of the episode. Uh, it's a to be continued. Really good. Really, really good. I can't wait to see how this all plays out. Thanks, everyone, for listening and for being here. Thank you, Mrs. Kravitz, for listening in. And we will catch you all on the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.